Um, so the, this is a variation of Hodge structure that we get when we have a family of varieties. Um, so we have a Q vector space which depends on a point S. So you might say a Q vector space which we'll expect to depend continuously on at some point. It can't really depend it. I mean, you can't move a continuously move a Q vector space. Okay. So that means that this is locally constant. So that's the first observation: is that uh, V, this family V Q S, is locally. A local constant family of Q vector spaces. So more precisely, what that means—I mean, it, more precisely, but without too many big words—what that means is that uh, if if we have some neighborhood, we have a neighborhood at the point, let's say S zero, then uh, for all S inside U, uh, that's a contractile. Then for any s inside of the neighborhood, uh, we have an isomorphism hk of x, s, q, isomorphic to hk of x, s0, q. And in, in fact, indeed, uh, the, the, these, the c infinity manifolds x, s, and x, s0 are, are isomorphic. And the isomorphism is well defined up to isomorphism. So maybe we can sort of draw a picture. Uh, so these are the XS. differential geometry picture in dimension two, uh, the fiber for dimension one is fine, but still, it gives you the idea. So if you just choose a, a horizontal vector field, I mean, if you have, a, you have a point S0 and you have a point S, and so you choose a path from S to S0, and then all over this path, take, take a vector field, and lift that vector field to a vector field upstairs, the vector field upstairs is going to give you a flow from the C infinity manifold XS back to the C infinity <coughs> manifold XS0. That's going to be a well defined isotopy class of diffeomorphisms between these two manifolds. Okay. And in particular, the cohomology is the same. Okay. So, that, so, in terms of our notation V, this means that V uh, QS is isomorphic to V Q. <coughs> And so in a little bit fancier terms, it says that really this VQ thing is a, a locally constant sheet. Of Q vector spaces. I'll call that a local system. But so now it's a good point, it's a good time to reflect on what that really means globally. Okay, so this is locally. So in other words, we're saying this is when S is near to S0. And I said that you have a well-defined isotopy class of diffeomorphism. But what happens if you go along a really long path? Well, you could still lift a vector field. So you could still make an isotopy. But that isotopy is not going to be the same as, I mean, if you say, go on a really long path that comes back to the same point, that isotopy over the long path is not necessarily, that, that diffeomorphism is not necessarily going to be the identity. Not necessarily isotopic to the identity. Because there's no way over a long path, if, if this path is not contractible in the base, then there's no way to, to modify that back to the identity. So that's called monotropy. So monotropy is that on a global level, Uh, this VQ might not be a constant sheet. And so if you have a path along the loop, uh, let's say gamma from 0, 1, 
So we have a loop inside the base, uh, just a path. But as the two base points, the two endpoints are, are both S0. So that means the path represents a class in pi 1 of S with the coefficients in S0. Then we got a transport function. So uh, So transporting along gamma gives uh, uh, an automorphism. We'll call it transport gamma from V S0 to itself. So in terms of just a family of Q vector spaces, you can pretty much roughly see this, which is to say, as you're moving along the path, just sort of choose a basis of each Q vector space in such a way that the basis varies continuously. Uh, and it's a Q basis, okay? So it can't really move locally. And as you go around, the, when you go around the path, you come back and your basis will be probably different bases. I mean, it should be the same, but uh, generally different. Okay. Putting all these together for the different paths, we get a representation. GL of this V QS0. This is called the monograph representation. And so this represents how non trivial, topologically non trivial, this family is okay, on a global level. So it's measures. measures the global topological non-triviality of the, of the family uh, x over s. So for example, and if, uh, let's not write this down on the board, but if we go back to our example of, M, of the moduli space of curves and the universal family of curves, then the, the fundamental group of the moduli stack of curves is what's usually known as the mapping class group of the Riemann surface. And the, the representation is just the mapping class group acting on the cohomology of the curve. So the mapping class group is the set of all diffeomorphisms of the, of the Riemann surface uh, up, up to isotopy. And if you have a diffeomorphism, then that's going to give you an automorphism of the cohomology. Uh, in the case of curves, K will be 1, so we'll take H1 of the curve. And that, if you think about that principle, that same principle works in, for any family of, of manifolds. Uh, that's that, that's going to be true in differential geometry. Okay, so that's the first. So that's the first part of our variation of Hutch structure. If we just, that's this, this is just stuff that we can say if we look at this family of Q vector spaces. But we can. But uh, so a point here is that there's already something non-trivial happening just with the family of Q vector spaces on a global level. On a local level, it, it's just constant. Now, what can we do when, when we have a family of Q vector spaces? We can look at um, we can look at VQ. Let's say this sheaf, so to speak. Or, I mean, if you don't like sheaves, just think of this as the family of uh, things. So we get a, a local system of C vector spaces. <coughs> we can tensor with C. And then let's let V, uh, kind of round V, be the total space of this local system. So, so this is equal to the, the set of all points of the form S comma V, where S is in the base and V is in the pi. And now this thing, if you think about it, it this is a C infinity vector bundle. On 
pass. I mean, it's, uh, at a basic level, it's just a family of vector spaces, uh, right? For each point in the base, we have a vector space, which is the, the V of, of that point. And those fit together to form a bundle. Well, in fact, the bundle is actually has constant transition functions. That's what it means that the VQ is a locally constant sheet. It means that the transition functions that you need to glue together the, to get the bundle, those are actually constant over S. Yeah, locally constant. Locally constant, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, okay, they'll be constant. In, if, if we take an open covering, which is small enough, then the, the transition functions will actually be constant. Uh, let's say, I mean, we assume that the intersections on the open cover are themselves connected. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and so, well, since the transition functions are constant, that means that the C-infinity vector bundle has, in addition, a flat connection. <coughs> Let's call it D, capital D. So, the connection operator D, capital D, can be thought of as an operator from sections of the bundle into uh, A1. The coefficients in the bundle. So this is one form. V coefficients. Okay. This is just differentiation. So sections. So, uh, so sections of V. Those are C infinity sections of. Uh, those are C infinity sections of this family of, of, of vector spaces. Okay, so if we have a long in terms of in terms of a locally constant basis, V1, Vr of, of this VQ thing. Um, and there's vi of s is in vq s, but these are locally constant in terms of these uh, in terms of this transport thing. Uh, then a section of v is uh, has the form of, uh, summation of a i of s times. We just differentiate these functions. So, in other words, uh, because of the fact that we have this locally constant structure here, that these vector spaces on, at, at nearby points, these vector spaces are all isomorphic. So, if we choose a basis. So what this really means is we choose a basis over the point S0, and then we transport it around to the neighboring points by what I said here. Okay. That gives us a basis at all the neighboring points. <coughs> then a section of the C infinity bundle is just going to be a C infinity section of that, which is to say it's written in terms of the basis using C infinity coordinate function. Then the, the connection operator applied to that section is just differentiate these, these guys, which is to say and in other words, the formula D of these VI is equal to zero. <coughs> and the flat connects on the, the curvature of D, so F of D, which is D, D composed of D. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss this a little bit more tomorrow, okay? But, okay, the curvature operator goes from V into A2 of V. Uh, this is equal to zero. And that's just because, if you just write that down in terms of uh, formulas, that's just because d squared equals zero, right? Since we have, if we have locally constant sections, then the connection operator is automatically flat, I might say, just because it was defined that way. Uh, but in terms of the formula, if we apply the d's two times, we just get d squared here. That's zero. The d squared ma mapping into two forms, not into one form of tensor, one form of tensor. <coughs> Thank you.
But so I'm, why am I saying all this is to set up the fact that, uh, to set up some language in which we can discuss the, the, the VPQ subspaces. Right? Because remember the VPQ subspaces were subspaces of the complexified uh, vector space. And as it turns out, those are not locally constant, otherwise nothing would be happening. Okay? The, the VPQ spaces are not locally constant, they're actually moving. So to set up the fact that they're moving, we need to discuss these C infinity sections of the total space. And so now the Hodge decomposition might say property too. So these are properties which are proven by Griffith. Uh, but this is not, I mean, even this part is not totally obvious. This comes from some elliptic operator theory. The Hodge decomposition is a decomposition of C infinity vector bundles. Uh, and the form this, this V is a direct sum of VPQ. For V plus Q equals K. K is called the weight. That, that it just says that these VPQ, so it should, what it basically says, it says that it says that the VPQ as a function of S spaces vary in the C infinity way as a function. Due to, this is by some because of some elliptic operator theory. Yeah. I mean, I define it as some elliptic operator theory. But you know, the the fact that that happens in complex analysis is also due to an elliptic operator theory. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crucial. I mean, it goes back to elliptic operator properties for d-bar, if you want. So yeah. it really does come from. Well, maybe, I guess in the case of an algebraic family, then, as Dima says, you can prove this in an algebraic way. But you can construct. You can prove it's a different story, right? Construct all the data and the algebraic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm skipping over right. a certain amount of details. Um, I'm skipping over a certain amount of details called algebraic Duram cohomology. I don't know if we'll have time really to discuss that. Um, the, what Dima is saying here is that, um, that this stuff, this flat connection, this C infinity flat connection, which we are viewing as obtained by looking at the lattice of uh, Q cohomology, you can actually define that in, in, the, in the case of an algebraic geometry family, X over S, you can define this stuff uh, in a, in an al using algebraic geometry. That's called the Gauss-Mundian connection. But so, uh, what I want to say in this first part about the discussion is just what are the basic properties of this decomposition? So, basic properties. Of this decomposition. So, number three is that we have, uh, as before, we have the VQ, the, the PQ bar equals VQP. So these, these, this, this vector bundle has a real structure. This is a complex vector bundle. This is a complex C infinity vector bundle, but it has a real structure because we could have tensored with R instead of C. Okay? So there's a real of space. I say we have a VR. We have a real sub bundle, so this is just. With respect to that real structure, if you conjugate the VPQ space, you get the VQP space. Uh, but now the main property this is called Griffith's transversality.
is that suppose we write decompose this into the 1, 0, and 0, 1 part. Um, I guess maybe, a, maybe my notation would have been little d prime plus little d double prime or something like that, possibly. So let's decompose this according to Hodge type of the forms on S. I mean, so it's basically it's basically d equals del plus del bar. It's obtained by applying by writing this d here as del plus del bar. Then, then, the, then we have the following statement. <coughs> Then the D10 part is going to take the VPQ into the space, into the VPQ So but, uh, this is maybe a little bit difficult to, to parse and see what this says. So what does it say? So let's just first look at these. Let's look at these pieces here. Okay. So these pieces here. So we take one zero forms with coefficients in PQ. We take one and we get one zero forms again with coefficients in PQ. Those have to be there because the 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 operator satisf satisfies the Leibniz rule. So, so it says that uh, d one zero uh, if we multiply. Uh, Let's say a times b. This is going to be uh, a times b is d one zero over v plus. So you know a is a function. This is going to be a times d one zero v plus del of a times v. Okay. So in other words, this satisfies the Leibniz rule for the operator del, the one zero part of the d operator, and the same for d bar. So from this from this rule, you can see that you're 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 forced to have I me. Mean, if you just multiply by some C infinity function, you'll automatically have forms with coefficients which have the same you know, the same vector here. You know, the, in, the image of some vector is the same vector, and then a, a, zero, a one zero form with coefficients in that vector. So that means that this part of the of the connection really has to be there. You might say, and the same this part this operator really has to be there. But the other parts don't wouldn't necessarily have to be there. <coughs> And so what this says, this says, so the first, let's say, uh, well, okay, let's look at the second thing. The second thing says that if we differentiate in the d bar direction, the, the, the vectors only go in one direction of the Hodge decomposition. They only go into the p plus 1, q minus 1 direction. Okay? They don't go to the p minus 1, q plus 1. And especially, they don't jump several spaces. Okay? So, the, so the point here is that these operators, it means that when you differentiate a, a section, it only differentiates in the direction of the next 
subspace. It doesn't differentiate in the, set, in the direction of two subspaces further, further down. Okay, so basically, so the first thing says that the VPQ only varies in the direction of VP minus one, Q plus one, or VP plus one, Q minus one. Okay. So let's remember that uh, here, the P plus Q is given is some fixed given number, which is called the weight. So, so if we get, do P plus one, we should do Q minus one and so on. Um, I mean, there, there, we, we write, by tradition, we write two indices, but there's really only one index here. Okay. So these, these subspaces, we can, well, I can like write, say, B2, 0, We write these in a row. This is going to say, well, so for example, in this kind of a case, this would say that the V20 space could vary in the direction of the V11 space, but to first order, it doesn't vary all the way in the direction of the V02 space. So this is to first order. Of course, to second order, this space will vary over to here because the first order variation goes to here, and then the next first order variation goes to here. Okay, so up to second order, then and this one can go over here. But to first order, it says that, the, that, the, that this decomposition into subspaces only varies in a constrained way. And it also says that the... So, uh, let me also comment that these two formulas are kind of dual by this property. Okay? The, the VPQ bar equal VQP bar, QP. That, that's, if we take bar, that's going to interchange the two formulas. So in some sense, the, the information here is really contained in one of these, either one of these two formulas. So let's look at this formula. So this, this formula also says, that's the first part. This formula also says that the V, uh, the D bar, you know, the quote D bar of V, P, Q, goes in the VP plus one, Q minus one direction, but not in the V, P minus one, Q plus one direction. Okay. So let me, let me sort of sum up that whole morphicity thing in a different way. So let's call this A. So part B here, what part B says, Says that uh, we might say well known claim is Hodge filtration. So if we define F P to be the direct sum of P prime bigger than or equal to P of the P Q. So we take the, the direct sum, right? So this is telling us that. D bar is going in the, in the, in the direction of increasing P, P plus 1. Okay. So if we add together VP, VP plus 1, VP plus 2, and so on, uh, I guess that's going in this direction. So, for example, this is going to be a hot filter, and this is going to be a hot filter. If we add together all the stuff in the direction of P plus 1, uh, in, increasing P, then the D bar of that is going to be preserved. Okay. So then we have the D bar. So then D1, D01 on S, that's the D bar off there, of this FP, uh, it's contained in FP. What does that say? That says that FP is a whole morphic sub. And 
these, these conditions are kind of an equivalent way of writing those conditions. Because the part three bullets not do this, uh, that will take a little bit too much time, but you can kind of imagine using this VPQ bar equals VQP. Then once we know the Hodge filtration, then we actually can know the Hodge spaces. Uh, maybe write that down. Right, v, VPQ is equal to uh, FP intersect F Q bar. So once we know if we know the if we know the the Hodge filtration, then we can know the VPQ subspaces. And these two versions of the condition that the FP is a whole morphic subbundle and that it only varies in the next further direction. So this is a decreasing filtration. The, 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 the bigger thing is Fp minus 1, okay, because of this. So this is a decreasing filtration. So this says that the, the variation of the p level, the filtration, goes in the direction of the next step of the filtration. Whereas if you take, just, if you just take a, a C infinity vector bundle with a flat connection and you choose a fil family of filtrations, in general, the, the, differenti the first order differential of one filtration level will go into all the other filtration levels. So this is a condition. This is this is the condition called Griffith's transversality. This is in some way the the condition that everybody else seems to have missed somehow. Uh, and the whole theory, but it's the condition which really makes the whole theory work. So it's kind of a fun fun theory because of that reason. And uh, so we'll see in a minute. We'll see in a little while why this is called transversality. Anyway, so that's a, so that's a variation of Hodge structure. So variation of Hodge structure is going to be uh, so so to sum up a VHS. So there's two, I mean, these are two equivalent versions of Griffith's transversality. What's on this board? What's on this board or what's on that board are two equivalent uh, versions of this condition. And uh, V, P, Q bar equals V. So Griffith's theorem is that uh, these properties hold, okay, so uh, differentiation of the form. So we have to you have to differentiate these harmonic forms in some way. Because these uh, maybe the maybe the maybe this this version is maybe easier to 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 Yeah 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 I mean easy easy. But you, you, have, you can one way is to approach it from this point of view to to construct the construct this local system and construct the Gauss Money connection by the algebraic Duram cohomology. Um, 
But it's not limited on algebraic, just I mean, in, in general setup, you just take, take real of the term complex and uh, yeah, yeah. even in the scalar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in some sense, of, there's still a question which is why is this, why do we have this property of variation in a single direction? It's basically because uh, we just, we're just differentiating one time, essentially. So I mean, uh, roughly speaking, you have to choose one of these vector fields upstairs to compare the nearby fibers. And we're just differentiating a single time. And remember that the, the, these hot subspaces are given by counting how many dz's and dz bars there are. Okay? And so the point is that if you differentiate a single time, you're not going to be able to change the dz's into dz bars more than one at a time. Uh, right? if, you, if you make a derivative of something, then that, you can change a dz into a dz bar somehow or other, but only one of them, because we just took the first derivative. So that's what I mean, very roughly. Uh, and as I said, and as such, uh, pointing out, there's, there's different ways you can do it following this route in, whole morph in the whole morphic <coughs> world. And you to know a little bit more about hypertomology and stuff. Or you could do it following this route with just direct uh, decomposing harmonic forms. But then you have to differentiate your harmonic form. Okay. Anyway, so that's the secure. This is so this is basic Griffith's really original observation. Now, uh, so now the ne our next topic is going to be polarization because this observation, okay, it's kind of a fun linear algebra of fact and so on, which is very nice. Um, and in a certain sense, it doesn't, <coughs> in and of itself, it's not really going to lead to uh, any properties. Um, so there's another, there's another aspect to this whole story, which is important, which is the, the thing which works together with this property, uh, which actually gives you know lots of problems. That's the aspect of polarization. But before we get to polarization, I'd like to just take a little interlude here to talk about algebraic cycles of the, the Hodge theory, uh, the Hodge conjecture. Okay. So we'll get to polarization in a minute. Okay, so next main section. Next main section is polarization. But before that, let's do an interlude, which is uh, Algebraic cycles in the Hodge conjecture. So it would be, you know, a, a, so as they say, a miss to discuss Hodge theory without mentioning, obviously, the Hodge conjecture, which is the main open question in the whole subject. Um, <coughs> I guess if you saw it, you can get, I think, a million dollars right now, if I'm not mistaken. Don't, don't, don't quote. I mean, don't, don't come back to me and say, Carlos, where did my million dollars? But um, you know, it's also worth a little less than it used to be. Um, okay, so. Uh, what is the, so, so what do we say here? So uh, the point here is suppose we, so this stuff is functorial, so everything is functorial. Everything is functorial and compatible with punk ray duality. So if if we have a map of algebraic variety, uh, I'm sorry, of compact Kähler manifolds, so it's not what it's called. Then we're going to get a G upper star map. From H K of X into H K of Y. Now let's suppose this has dimension M and dimension M. So the first point is that this is a map of hot structures. So that you know, g upper star of h p q of, of x is contained in h p q of y. Okay. 
Oh, that's maybe, well, okay, it's not completely obvious, actually. Uh, because, so, it, so it's not true that the, the pullback of a harmonic form is a harmonic form. But on the other hand, if you look a little bit more carefully, you need to discuss this a little bit more like what we were doing yesterday. Um, this HPQ space can also, be rep can also be described as the space of cohomology classes which admit some representative that has a pure type of PQ. Because if you have a cohomology, of course, if you have a harmonic PQ form, then it's a pure, then it admits that representative. But also, if you have a, a representative that has Hodge type PQ, pure Hodge type PQ, but it's not necessarily harmonic, then you could change it to a to a del bar harmonic form. Okay. If you change it to a del bar harmonic form, well, then you have to do a little bit more argument. But roughly, you can change it to a del bar harmonic form, but which is also D equivalent to that form, and and so you'll you can change it to a harmonic form that has type PQ. You mean DD bar lemma? This is the DD bar lemma. Yeah. There's a little bit of extra stuff you can do, but anyway, well, we don't really have time to do that, but you can read that paper. Um, okay, so roughly speaking, uh, this roughly speaking comes from the discussion we were doing yesterday. Okay. But, oh yeah, that's just right, as Sasha pointed out. But this is called the DE bar. And uh, maybe there's something, principle of two types that also comes up. <laughs> but now also from what we, you know, we can, cut, we sort of saw this one discussing the Hodge diamonds yesterday. Which is that um, if y has dimension m, then h to m of y is equal to h m m of y, which is equal to just c. Okay. So this is the this is part of the statement of Poincaré duality, the, the top dimensional cohomology class. So this is the complex dimension of y is m, so the real dimension. Y is two m, and y is a two, y is a real manifold, so it has just a one-dimensional top cohomology class. That's part of the statement of Poincaré duality. So the top cohomology class of y has dimension one, and in fact, it's kind of a it has to be this way because of the PQ uh, because of the complex conjugation property that has to be type m m. But indeed, if you think of coordinates, I mean, a uh, top degree form has to exactly have M disease and M dz bars. It's all the disease and all the dz bars. Okay. So it has to have any form has to have M. Okay, so we have uh, so we have H. Uh, let's see. So what do I want to say? Uh, we have H two M of X. So we have a map, the restriction map for H2M of X into H2M of Y, which is C, and the Poincaré duality on X if we take the dual, the dual of this map, this linear form, so this is a linear form on H2M of X, okay. the Poincaré duality on X tells us that we get a map from C back into H. Uh, 2n minus 2m of x. And this thing factors through h m m of x. And so the, the dual thing is going to factor through h n minus m comma n minus m of x. Okay. That's, that's the statement that the, this Hodge stuff is compatible with Poincaré duality. And so if we get an element, I mean, you know, the element one here maps to what we'll call the class of Y. So we get, so the conclusion is the class of Y, like let's say G lower star of the class of Y, in H 2N minus 2N of X. 
So, you know, n minus m is the co-division. But it's also in h2 n minus 2m of x comma q. So uh, let's not write this down, but uh, uh, maybe this might have been a little bit confusing. Um, this is just the homology class of y. Okay? So y is an m-dimensional manifold. It's a 2m-dimensional real manifold. So it represents a 2m-dimensional homology class. I mean, its image inside x represents a 2m-dimensional homology class. And here, we, this Poincaré duality thing is just we transform that homology class into a cohomology class. And we, there's a switch of dimensions. Okay. So this is the, this is, that's why we're writing like this. This is really the homology class of the image of y okay, inside x. And so the, the, the conclusion here is that the homology class of, of the image of G of Y going to be written in this way. So we'll introduce what's called P, the co-dimension of Y, which is uh, N minus M. So, so the homology class of Y represents a cohomology class which of, co of dimension P, uh, 2P, where P is the co-dimension, the real co-dimension, 2P is the real co-dimension of, uh, of Y. P is the complex co-dimension. And this space is called the space of Hawke cycles. And the, the classes of Y uh, you, okay, usually this terminology is usually used in algebraic geometry where we're not just looking at Kähler manifolds, but in fact algebraic variety. So the classes of Y, these are called algebraic cycles. And so this just this, this basic discussion from Hodge theory tells us that algebraic cycles are contained in, in Hodge cycle. Hodge theory. So basic. Basic Hodge theory tells us that algebraic cycles are contained in Hodge cycles. And the Hodge conjecture. Says that the converse is true. No, sorry. The, the, in other words, all Hodge cycles So the, the you know the current the currently uh, valid shall we say version of the Hodge conjecture says that all Hodge cycles come from algebraic cycles, which it, by this we mean sums with Q coefficients of algebraic cycles. So there's a big industry about the integral Hodge conjecture. The integral Hodge conjecture is not that's generally true. So there are Hodge cycles where we put Z here, which don't come from integer combinations of algebraic cycles. But then, but you might have to do a denominator. Okay, but so then the only case which is, I mean, well, we'll start with that in the next talk. Uh, pretty much very little is known, but it's known from you. It's known for P equals 1, which is called the left shots 1 1 theorem. And I mean, I, I mean, this is a matter of a little bit of a matter of opinion, but I, I mean, very few cases are really known beyond that. We'll start with this.